in this series of videos, uh, we will be looking at eight excellent questions. So first of all, it is required to introduce you to what is the meaning of eight excellent questions. Now the question is that what is the meaning of excellent questions? So here we have categorized the eight excellent questions into three categories. Number one is tricky questions. So if you observe in the gate examination, not all the questions are going to be easy. Not all the questions are going to be difficult. Gate examination is an aptitude examination. It basically focuses on how you are going to think. So it is obvious that the questions might be asked based on tricks. It means that you have to think over it. If you are solving the problem without thinking, either you will be unable to solve the problem or it will take a huge amount of time to solve this particular problem, which is of course not the purpose of the gate examination. So the first category is the tricky questions. Second category, the second category is nothing but the conceptual traps. Now what is the meaning of conceptual trap? Some questions will be framed in such a way that students make mistakes. That is the purpose of the question. The purpose of the question is not to make it tough, but ensure that you make a mistake. And who makes a mistake? The students who are not very clear either with the formula or with the concept are going to make a questions. That sort of questions are what we call as conceptual traps. And third category of question is the multi-concept questions. So multi-concept question means that more than one concept has to be applied to solve the problem. For example, the question might be asked more than one topic in a single chapter or the question might be asked from different topics of different chapters or the question can be asked from the different topics of different subjects. So that is the reason why the question is excellent. Now the advantage that you will have when you are able to solve such type of questions is that the performance in your gate examination is going to increase. If the questions are easy, anyone can solve the problems. But when the questions are tricky or if there is any sort of traps or if the question gets complicated because of the fact that multiple concepts have to be applied, not many people are going to solve the problems. So that is the reason why we have made this particular category called as gate excellent. So today we are going to discuss about one excellent question of gate. So the purpose of this question is to make sure you understand that where students make mistakes in this sort of problems. So basically this belongs to the category of conceptual trap. Right. So first of all, let us read the question. This question basically belongs to the concept, I mean the chapter of linear algebra from the topic of right eigenvalues and vectors of mathematics. Now the product of the non-zero eigenvalues of the matrix, the matrix is given as 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0 1 1 1 0 and again it is repeating twice and the last row is nothing but the first row itself. Now what is the product of the non-zero eigen values of the matrix? The mistake number one that the student do is that they don't read the question clearly. They forget about the non-zero. Okay, they'll directly find what is the product of the eigen values. The product of the eigen values of the matrix is equal to the determinant of the matrix. And this matrix is a, a singular matrix for the reason that the row has been repeated. A row 2 has been repeated twice and row 1 has been repeated once. Right. So it means that whenever you are having a repetition of row, obviously the matrix is going to have a determinant is equal to 0. So some students, they will directly write the answer it as 0. Which is not a correct answer. This is a wrong answer. They don't study what is the meaning of non-zero eigenvalues. They directly take it as a product of eigenvalues and they will answer it as zero, which is a wrong answer. Mistake number two is that they will apply the row transformation. So let us apply the row transformation. So the row transformation that I can apply is R2 dash. R2 dash is R2. I'm sorry. So R3 dash is a equal to R3 minus R2. R4 dash is R4 minus R2. 
and R5 dash is R5 minus R1. Right. So, so here what happens is that you'll have after the transformation 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this matrix in a way is a upper triangular matrix where the lower triangle is equal to the top zero. We know that in the case of a, a triangular matrix, okay, the eigenvalues will be the principal diagonal elements. Eigenvalues will be the principal diagonal elements. So we will take the first eigenvalue is 1, second eigenvalue is 1, third eigenvalue which is equal to fourth eigenvalue which is equal to fifth eigenvalue is equal to 0. So the product of the non-zero eigenvalues is equal to the top 1. Now this is also a mistake. This is also not correct. This is also a mistake. Why is this a mistake? Because whenever you are doing the row transformation, the eigenvalues of the matrix are going to change. Whenever you apply the row transformation, the eigenvalues of the matrix are going to change. So therefore, I cannot apply this concept of row transformation to find the eigenvalues of the matrix. So if you are not satisfied, you can take any simple matrix. Maybe you can take 1, minus 1, 2, 3. And directly find the eigenvalues of this matrix and also find after applying some row transformation. You will observe that the after row transformation, the eigenvalues are going to change. So this is also not the correct method. So we have method, I mean, discussed two things where the students are going to make a mistake. Now let us look at the third method. Okay, so the actual method of solving this particular problem We know that a multiplied by x is equal to lambda multiplied by x where x is the eigenvector of the matrix a and lambda is what we call as eigenvalues of a. So what I will do is that let me consider x is going to be something like x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. So I will take a multiplied by x is equal to lambda multiplied by x. So what is a? 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. 1 0 0 0 1 multiplied by x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 is equal to lambda multiplied by x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 so a x is equal to lambda x if i apply this so what am i going to have Multiplication of these two will result in this one. So x1 plus x5, x1 plus x5 is equal to lambda x1. x1 plus x5 is equal to lambda x1. Next, x2 plus x3 plus x4. is equal to lambda x2. x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to lambda x2. Next is, again, x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to lambda x3. Again, x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to lambda x4. And the last one, x1 plus x5 is equal to lambda x5. 
So let me take these as equations. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now what I am going to do is that I am going to add the first and the last equations. 1 plus 5. What am I going to have? 2 times the top of x1 plus x5 is equal to the top of lambda times the top of x1 plus x5. So what is the eigenvalue now? You will get the value of the eigenvalue is equal to 2. So 2 is going to be one of the eigenvalue. Now, I will add 3, I mean 2, 3 and 4. 2 plus 3 plus 4, if I add, what am I going to have? 3 times the top of x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to lambda times the top of x1, I mean x2 plus x3 plus x4. Which implies that the value of lambda is equal to 3. So we got the two eigenvalues. What about the rest of the three? The rest of the three eigenvalues are actually zeros. Why? If you observe, here these two rows are basically the repetition of the second row. The number of times the repetition is going to happen, that many eigenvalues will be equal to zero. So because this is repeated once, one of the eigenvalue will be zero. Twice it is repeated, so therefore again the eigenvalue will be equal to zero. So two eigenvalues are zeros and even this row is repeated once. So third eigenvalue is also zero. So three eigenvalues are going to be zero. Remaining two non-zero eigenvalues are lambda is equal to two and lambda is equal to three. So the product of the non-zero eigenvalues are 2 into 3 which is 6. So the answer for this question is not 0, is not 1, it is equal to 6. Right? So it is very important to understand the concept and not make the mistakes. Thank you friends.